Hello, my name is Fiona Boy, I'm from St Albans Pottery and today I'm going to show you how to make tea lights. So what we've got here, this is one hasn't been glazed yet, is a little tea light with holes in it. What you're going to need is a ball of clay, your pointy stick and your paintbrush. You're also going to need a rolling pin and some guides. These guides are three mils thick and they will help get the right even thickness for your slab work. The other thing you need is a template to work from. Uh, this is an old cereal box. Clay will shrink between 10 and 15%. So you do want to make sure that you can actually get your hand in and your hand back out again with a little tea light to go inside. Um, I find cookie cutters are really great for doing the base. And then you're gonna work out that it needs to go more than around here. It doesn't matter that it's, that it's more, you want it more than less. So I'm gonna start with my hamburger shape. I like to squish it a little bit down first before I start rolling because that just starts it off well. Right, remember we're trying to get to this shape, so we're going to be doing a lot of long and thin rolling. When you roll, you want to be able to pick it up, turn it 90 degrees and upside down, and that way you're stretching the clay evenly all over. You'll be surprised how much clay is actually needed. So err on a larger ball of clay than you would think. How we're doing. Ah, yes. When we cut with our pointy stick, we're going to do top and bottom vertically. And at the sides, we're going to go at a 45 degree angle because the tides are going to overlap and have to be sealed. Top. Bottom. Go that way and you want to have the same angle that way. So you're keeping it leaning, cutting and cutting. Then you can remove the excess clay. You want to scrunch it together very carefully. You don't want to get any air bubbles in here and you want it to stay nice and wet. So you're going to keep it aside in a plastic bag or under a damp cloth. Once you've done that, you then need to get your finger, a little bit of water and just run up and down those edges, those very, very sharp sharp edges. Now we need to make the base. And you're pressing it down nice and firmly. Right. To get it out, you do want to press down very gently all the way around so you've got a very, very nice flat and evenly spaced base. So the next part is to press impressions into the clay. Over here, I've got some Indian stamps, I've got a fossil, and another little stamp, and I'm going to press these in. If your clay is quite firm when you've rolled it out, you can go onto this straight away. If your clay is a little bit wet and sticky, um, you might want to set it aside for half an hour, otherwise you could knock the um, beautiful rolled edges. Now that's done, you can set it aside for a few hours for it to firm up. You want to be able to take it off and handle it without ruining any of those lovely patterns. Right, so it's now time to build the piece. The first thing we need is our pointy stick and we're going to cross hatch around the edge and we're going to cross hatch the back and the sides. We've done it that way. So you want to do the bottom and the sides. You want to go one way. So you're wanting to do the inside of one side and the outside of the other side so that you're getting that overlay. Then you get your magic paintbrush. Now you pick it up and you're going to build it round there. Now you actually want to start in the middle and press it firmly as you're wrapping it round. Start in the middle, pressing it firmly at the base and wrapping it 
round. Now you will see that my one side is taller than the other and I'm going to cut it with a sharp tool. And again, you want to cut it at the angle that you need it. And then again, you would be scoring that water and pressing it very firmly. When you're pressing at the base, you've got the base behind it. As you're going up, you do need to have your finger inside. If you can't reach, you could use a pen. And again, you are pushing firmly against that pen to get a really strong join there. You can see my fingers are pushing it over and inside my pen is scooping it over. So you can see on the inside and at the base. So I'm going to tidy it up, but you can see in the bottom, I'm going to press in nice and neatly so that there are no lines there. I'm going to run my finger across the join and really get that nice and sealed. So what it happens is in the kiln, when it gets to a much warmer temperature, if there's any weakness, it is going to go and exploit that weakness. So you want to make sure those joins are nice and firm. If you do have any cracks, you might want to fill them. Get an extra little bit of clay in there and just get it nice and neat. The next part is to tidy up the rim and you'll need to smoothen it nicely. Wet your fingers and really get that rim nice and tidy. Another nice thing for doing lips is the chamois leather which you can use to go around it nicely and that will give you a nice finished edge. If you have a look here, this edge has actually been knocked out and that's with the pointy stick, which you can see is actually square, but you can get those little diamonds going down all the way. So you might want to just smooth up that join. Um, you can smooth it off with a lollipop stick and then reapply the textures. Um, and that way you can get it a nice seamless join on the outside and similarly you can tidy it up on the inside. Put a little sausage in the inside uh, between the wall and the base of the pot and that will then just make sure that there's no cracks coming through. For this you need to roll a sausage. I often find it easier to work in two sausages, one half and then the other half. Now you should be doing your scratching and scoring. Um, I find it's easier to dip them in some water, okay, and then place them inside. And then to actually push it into place with the back of the paintbrush. This one's much smaller, um, and so you can get your hand in much easier. So I do have my finger in with very short nails, and I am getting clay into that little corner and making sure that it seals very nicely. And so you have, ta-da! A nice sealed base. Now the important part of your tea, tea light is to actually make those holes. So like you've got here, you want that for the light to come through. So what you do is you've got your fingers on the inside to support it and you're getting your tool, you're poking it through and you're twisting it and that is how you're going to get some nice holes. You need quite a few holes for the light to come through in quite a nice pattern as well making sure you're moving your hand round and supporting at all stages. So you're ending up with a tea light with lots of holes. And of course, if you don't want to put any holes in it, this makes a really good drinking cup or pencil holder. And one last finishing touch is to put your name and date at the bottom, COVID-19. Once you're done and once you're happy, put it to a side and let it dry. You can then paint it with acrylic paints if you've got the air dry clay, or you can hand it back to me uh, for glazing if you've got the real clay. Right, well you get on with it, enjoy, I hope you have fun.